In this video, we'll be unboxing this Nova Viking drill press from Technitool. Let's go. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Thanks. When you open the box, you realize that there's not many parts to this. There's few parts that has to be assembled, but majority of the machine has already been assembled for you, which is really nice. And the only thing you really have to do is connect the drill press to the base and then install the table. That's pretty much it. The first thing I'll do is I'll clean off all of the manufacturer grease with WD-40, and then I'm going to connect the base to the drill press. It is a very heavy machine, so you want to be sure to have some help if you can't lift this up yourself. I ended up laying the drill press onto the styrofoam, and then I brought the base to the drill press and connected it that way. I'm only connecting three of the bolts because I couldn't get to the fourth bolt, but once you have three on there and you tighten it, you'll be able to stand it up and it'll be stable. Now I can get rid of the big old box now that it's on the base and it's standing up. With the drill press in the upright position, I'll go ahead and install the final bolt and the two washers. I'll also re-tighten all four bolts just in case I didn't tighten it enough earlier. It goes without saying, safety is very important. So if you can't lift this machine safely by yourself, definitely get somebody to help you. This drill press may look small, but it was my workout for the month. <laughs> All right, pretty much the heavy lifting is done. Everything else should be pretty simple. The drill press handles simply just screws into the pinion shaft. And with the provided wrench, you can go ahead and tighten it down. When installing the chuck, you want to make sure that the arbor is facing the right way. There's a little tongue at the very top and you want to make sure that's in the right direction. With a few sharp taps with the rubber mallet, the arbor should stay inside the quill. The table is really easy to install. It just slides into the table arm and then you'll use the handle at the bottom to lock it in place. I'll go ahead and clean it with WD-40 as well. Now you can go ahead and plug it in, turn it on, and it's done. All right guys, so that's pretty much what it takes to assemble this thing. It didn't take that long. Probably took me maybe 15 minutes to 20 minutes or so doing it by myself. It is a little bit heavy, so you wanna make sure that you have somebody to help you out trying to lift this off the ground. Um, yeah, but I didn't, so I tried my best to do it myself and just be careful. As you can see, it is pretty tall. This is not the final location for my drill press. I plan on making a mobile base for this thing so that I can move it around as needed. Um, the other thing that I plan on doing is building a drill press table um, with a fence and more dust collection because as you know, if you've worked with a drill press before, there's no dust collection. And you kind of figure out how to get all the chips out of the way because it makes a lot of chips. So that's some of my plans for the future. Um, let's go over some of the specs on this thing. It is a one horsepower motor. It is direct drive. The motor is directly on top of your chuck. The benefit of having a direct drive motor is you don't have to deal with any belts. I've used a um, Grizzly and a Jet drill press in the past. Those had belts on it. It was just a hassle fiddling with those belts. Sometimes, you know, the belt might snap after a while. Um, yeah, so making those adjustments as you were switching out bits from larger to smaller, that's just was 
That was such an inconvenience. And now with this, all I have to do is just turn this knob and it adjusts the RPM for me. Um, no belts, that's great. That takes one of the little maintenance issues out of this machine. That's something that was one of my top items whenever it came to looking for drill presses. Is there a machine out there that gets rid of those belts? And I'm glad that Nova made something like this and it's affordable too. Another feature that's nice is the quill travel or the stroke is four and a half inches, um, which is a lot better than some of the four standing models out there. So four and a half inches in this bench top form factor, that's amazing. And that was another feature that I looked into as well and the, why this stood out amongst the others out there. This is the 110 volt version. So it just plugs into any regular outlet on a 15 amp circuit. And they, they do offer a 220 version. For some reason, whenever I was looking for it, I couldn't find a 220 version of this. So I just went with a 110. If I had the capability in my shop to do a 220, I would definitely just go with 220 on this, running it at lower amperage. This thing does have a light and laser function. So you can just click the light and laser button and scroll through the different options there. Um, but yeah, so let's go over some of the really cool features. There's no depth stop gauge that you have to worry about. All of that is done internally. So what I can do is I can simply take my bit here, touch it to the top of this surface. I'll hit the zero on that. So now it's zero to the surface. And then I can go in and set my depth to, let's say this is a half inch board. Let's say I want to go ahead and do a quarter of an inch through. I can set the depth there, confirm, go beep. And then I can turn this thing on. And I'll make my, as you can see, as it touches, as it gets near your depth, it'll beep. Once it gets to the quarter, it'll stop and it'll go back in reverse. That's crazy. Um, so that right there is a quarter inch hole. I mean, that's, that's nuts. <laughs> There's also a self start function. I can go ahead and click the self start. What happens is as I'm going down, as it gets closer to the material, it'll start the motor and same thing as before once it gets to the quarter of an inch it'll go back in reverse that's just crazy like that's just amazing um yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know what to say about that that's just freaking cool there is a reverse option as well if you're working with left-handed drill bits um i never really worked with a left-hand drill bit before so I, I don't really have that that need, but it's cool. It's cool to have it. Yeah. So that, that's just all of this is like my face. Yeah. It, it, it says it all. Speechless. Uh, just look at that. Like that's just crazy, crazy. As I said, this is the benchtop version. They do make the standing model as well. It's called the Voyager. And with the Voyager, there's other features on there like the. RPM will be set based off of whatever bit that you're using. So you can set inside the program uh, that you're using a Forstner bit, what size of the Forstner bit, and the computer will take care of the speed for you. And it's kind of a starting point for you. I wish they would have included that feature in here. Um, they don't, but again, you know, figuring out your, your speeds on this is pretty simple. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it if that's going to sway you one way or the other. Um, there are tons of other features with the Voyager that I'm not too familiar with, but I know that's one of the biggest features that I saw. Um, but it, is, it does come at a higher price point as well. And for me in my shop, it was more about the form factor, how big this machine is and whether or not I can move it around the shop. Another thing I considered was the belts. I didn't want the machine to have belts. So yeah, so that's pretty much what I looked into whenever I decided to purchase this thing. I'm really happy with it. It's probably gonna be my forever drill press. Like I honestly don't feel like I would ever need to upgrade this thing unless I want the um, other bells and whistles that the Voyager has. 
Another thing is that this base is tiltable. So you can tilt this table and drill your holes at a certain angle if you need to. I'm super excited about this, to have this in the shop. And this is a freaking cool machine, I think. So that's where I'll leave it for this video. If you do have this machine, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you like it. Is there something that I forgot to go over? Um, let me know your thoughts. If you are in the market for a drill press, definitely consider this one right here. And if you do have any comments or questions about this machine, leave a comment down below and I will get to it as fast as I can. Until next time, this has been Bao with Design Craft Workshop. See ya. If you like this video, hit that like button and definitely subscribe. Thanks.